Today, what we want to do is actually kind of tackle a little bit of a multidisciplinary design. So last Thursday, you looked at the whole issue of really how you could start with an architectural model and start adding structural elements to it. So adding columns and beams and beam systems and uh, foundations underneath it, things like that. And that's something we'll need to be doing for the uh, next assignment. What we're going to be doing for the next assignment, if you've had a chance to open it up, is we're really giving you this little uh, model of a, really the architectural design of a little three-story building. And within that, we're basically supposed to link to that model and put a structure inside of it, and as well as going ahead and putting some plumbing and a little bit of HVAC in there. And for these systems, for the structural system, um, you'll be going ahead and doing the full structural system, at least in terms of putting columns and beams and beam systems on the three different floors. But hopefully you saw as part of Thursday's talk that there was this whole ability to go through and like if you do it on one floor, copy and paste it aligned to the next floor, which really saves an awful lot of work because the structural system for all three of the floors is essentially the same. It just kind of keeps on copying up and you need to add a little bit of foundation work underneath it. So for structural, you'll do a fairly complete job. For the assignment for this mechanical system and actually for the uh, plumbing system, you're actually going to be doing a very small portion of the building. I think in the assignment we asked you to kind of plumb the second floor restrooms, something like that, just a very small section. And even for the mechanical section, when we're starting to run ductwork around, you don't need to run ductwork through the entire building. This is going to be one office suite on one half of one floor. So pretty much putting in some air terminals and some ductwork to connect to an air handler. Okay, so think about the scope being a little bit narrow in terms of what's going on. But let's go ahead and just kind of look at how that would work. I put together an example that I realize is in Revit 2012, so we'll just go ahead and create an example in class here together today of really just starting with, first we'll do a pl uh, plumbing model, and the idea is we're going to go through and just uh, put some plumbing fixtures into an architectural model, it'll be a very simple one, and just show you how you can sort of use the uh, piping features and the routing features to connect them together. And then Luis is going to come in after, uh, after the break, and he's going to show us about the mechanical systems using the same basic idea. So let's start just over in Revit Architecture. You can create a brand new model if you want. Because we want something simple. Before we're going to go ahead and run with the main building, let's go ahead and like uh, kind of stumble around and walk a little bit with something very simple. And I'll do something, just take some walls, and it's not going to be real critical in terms of what these walls look like right now. Um, I'm just going to put some walls down just to give me a little bit of context. Okay. Now, inside of these walls, these uh, walls that are surrounding the building, what I want to do is actually put a couple plumbing fixtures that I can start attaching together. And then we'll copy those in to a MEP model and start actually adding the piping to those plumbing fixtures. So the idea is typically that as we go ahead and get started, um, your architect is probably going to go ahead and make some assumptions about where the plumbing fixtures are going to be and sort of give some locations. And then you're going to go through as an MEP engineer and go through and do the, uh, the piping and the routing and kind of connect all that stuff into systems. So just to kind of complete this model a little bit, let me uh, add a few more features to it just to kind of make it more like the bigger model that we were working with for the assignment. One thing is then the bigger model, we put some grids down. So I'll just put some grids in here. And the reason I'm going to put the grids in here, it's not going to be so important for this model, but when we start copying and pasting things of a bigger model between different projects, we'll actually want to copy the grids with us as part of just keeping oriented about how all the different systems fit together. So let's kind of show you what that looks like. So over here, I'm just going to make that grid A and make that one grid B, just on making a little rectangular grid system. And then I can take these walls and align them. And again, you don't need to be doing this um, for the assignment. This, is the, this part of the building is already just given to you. So I can say that would be aligned to like the center line, oh, right there, of that wall. So your model already has this in it. I'm just doing this so we have something to work with in class. <coughs> There's probably also some levels within the model. And within the assignment model, there's actually like a level one, two, three, and roof. And then it ultimately goes to a little parapet or something like that. For what we're doing right now, we just kind of keep with these levels. There aren't that many that are necessary. Yeah, I'll put one more in. And there's level three. So this is a pretty close facsimile of the building you're working on in the assignment. So 
on level one, for example, though, let's put place some plumbing fixtures in here, and I'm going to sort of place some special ones. Turns out, in terms of components, there are really two categories. There are these standard ones that come as part of Revit architecture, and they're pretty good in terms of looking like plumbing fixtures, but they don't have all of the connection information kind of attached to them that's really necessary in terms of understanding what the flow is in and the flow is out and how you want to connect it all together. So we're going to do a little preemptive strike here and actually put in plumbing fixtures that have those components in them. What we can do is kind of take the architectural ones and map them to ones that have this in there, but then there's a little bit of a readjusting the shape and the orientation of them to make it all work right. So let's just go ahead and put in some plumbing fixtures that are of the right type. And the way to do this, I'm going to go to Component, and oh, I'll load a family. And instead of just working within the standard Revit RAC family, the Revit architecture family, I'm going to do a little sideways navigation over to the Revit mechanical families and grab some of those plumbing fixtures instead. So I'm going to go out of the Autodesk folder and go into, see if you can find RME 2010. So again, where I'm going is, let me kind of pop out of this slowly. So I'm going to place in, you can do this, why don't you go ahead and just get like two toilets or two sinks or something relatively simple for yourself. I'll say load a family. And then as I'm loading a family by default, it's going to go into the Revit architecture families. So our AC. And what we're going to do is back out to Autodesk and see if we come down and get mechanical instead. So let's roll on over. And it kind of depends on how it's installed in all these machines. Can most of you find like RME? Let's see if you can sort of like uh, navigate over to there. So again, all I am is I'm in architecture right now, but we're just uh, trying to place a component, and we're <coughs> seeing if we can find the mechanical components to work with. Don't worry if you if you can't find it on your machine. I'll save this this file out to the L drive so we can all kind of pick up and run with it in just a second if you're having trouble finding this. So I'm going to say let's go to the Imperial Library under Mechanical, and under Plumbing Fixtures. You'll find all the usual suspects, like water closets and things like that. Now, they call them a little bit differently here. They're named a little bit different than the convention when they are in Revit architecture. So for like a flush valve one, wall mounted or floor mounted, that's kind of pretty much what we think of as a domestic toilet, whether it's floor or wall mounted. And if we choose it, kind of take a look at what we have. There's actually a couple different types available in here. There are public ones and private ones. And that's really the difference. OK, well, it's, it's not really that they're public or private. It's really what the application is going to be. <laughs> in the private domain, in domestic architecture, we can put toilets at about 15 feet off the ground, or 15 inches off the ground, pardon me, um, which would be uh, like appropriate. It would sort of feel right there. In a public application, toilets are higher. We mount them at 19 inches off the ground just for ADA requirements. So that's really what the difference is. It's really just the mounting height between the two. They have the whole idea of 1.6 gallons per flush, or allowing greater than 1.6 gallons per flush. That'd be important when we start thinking about our sustainability and our water use, you know, whether we have a low flow or a normal one. So let me go for, oh, I'll go for a low flow public toilet. Now, there's also going to be one other sort of variation to this, and that you'll see it's kind of like laying over on its side here. We have the choice of do we going to put it on a plane, put it on a face, or place it on a vertical face. And that's the one I'm going to choose. What that's going to let me do is actually choose a wall in plan view, and it'll figure out what the vertical surface is and mount it onto that. So I can put a toilet over here, and I'll put another toilet right next to it there. And again, this has really just been mounting them. If you choose them at this point, and we go to the pr element properties, you can see, oh, they're mounted at a specific height. Next up, it looks like 17 inches. And we got a couple of those down, just mounted to the wall. OK, I'm going to put a couple more fixtures in here just to give us something to work with. And then we'll take it over to Rev Mechanical. And again, if you're not keeping up with me right now in terms of creating this sort of sample model, no worries. I'll save this out to the L drive so you can pick it up and run with it. OK, so let me place another component in here. I'll again load a family. And let's go out to plumbing. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. I can tell I'm in Revit Architecture, RAC. We're going to go over to Revit ME. Now, for you, relative to the assignment, 
Um, if you've already started, <coughs> what's going to happen is I'm going to issue uh, an update to the architectural model, or for anyone really. I'm going to issue an update to the architectural model file, the file that you really shouldn't be changing. That's kind of the architectural model file that you've been given. But it'll have uh, like all the Revit MEP components in it instead. So if you haven't started the plumbing yet, you can just go ahead and grab the new one and swap it in for the old one, and things will all work. If you haven't started yet, don't worry. Just go ahead, and there'll be a new uh, set of files out there. But if you have, just swap my new architectural model in underneath. And that's actually part of the beauty about this linking and the way of doing it this way is I can swap a new one underneath you, as your architect might do, as you've already started your engineering. And as long as we're not moving things too radically, we should sort of stay in sync with each other. That's kind of the hassle of multidisciplinary work is that we all have to kind of try and keep in sync. So let me go to the library again, and I'm going to grab a couple more pieces. OK, let me get, oh, like a sink. Actually, for these hand sinks, these ones we kind of walk up to, those are considered lavatories. Because I guess we're ooh, washing our hands. Let me go ahead and choose that. I'll put that on the wall over here. And let me also put a urinal in there. Now, <laughs> again, don't pay any attention to my uh, like uh, architectural design, because I need a lot more features in here. But uh, this will be enough to get us started, at least in terms of the plumbing. OK, so Revit ME. 2012, and I'm going to go out and grab this urinal. OK, plumbing components, a fixture, and urinal. With wings? Not with wings. That's interesting. That one looks like it might have got saved. Is there something else? Let me see if I can pull the other one in. Every once in a while, I make the mistake of uh, overwriting my things. Yeah, so I could have actually wiped that out in my collection. Yours is probably OK. Let me see if I can grab the one with wings or something like that. Uh, it, it, OK. That could have something to do with when we loaded it, that it didn't load all the content in. If, you, if we need to get some more of the content, some of the content that's missing from your machine, we can actually pull it off the K drive. It's just a big old file full of stuff. So let's even kind of show you where that is. OK, let me go back to here. Let me get that one more thing. Fixtures, and I'll say uh, urinals. Let me try that one instead. No, again, no, I'll leave the urinal out for now. No, that's just a lavatory. Hmm. I should pull it off the K drive instead. It seems like I've saved them. Uh, actually, I can do that. <laughs> OK. Load it from the families. The infamous K drive is out there. We always use the L drive. The L drive is where we store our stuff. The K drive is actually where I put the program libraries and the installation files. So if you need to grab anything that's not actually available on your machine on the K drive, bury it alive in here under Revit libraries. And Revit MEP, you'll actually find all these things. So let's see if this will actually work. So if you're connected to the L drive or the K drive, we should be able to get these things. Or even while you're here, feel like free to copy them over on your thumb drive or something like that, or copy them over directly. Let me just see if this will work. <coughs> if I've wiped them all. <coughs> okay, that one looks better. So I'm going to mount it on the vertical face. I'll put the urinal right over here. So couple object lessons in there. If you need parts, go to the K drive, and you can pull out of the master library to your machine. Um, and if you accidentally overwrite with a newer version, which I do sometimes because I work with 2012 and the newer versions of it, uh, we can kind of pull back. OK, so this model is not all that interesting. Let's just take a look at it. But it's going to be enough for us to do some plumbing. You'll sort of see that we have two toilets that are wall mounted. We have a urinal that's wall mounted. And we have a sink that's wall mounted. And we're pretty much ready to go. OK? So let me do this. I will save this as. And I'm going to put it on the L drive, just so you guys can get to it, too. I'll say uh, class session files. And what are we? We're at the session 15 already. Is that right? Yikes. OK, and we will call that. Session 15, 
architectural. Okay, and save that away. Okay, so that is available for you for right now. Now that file is one that you know you don't need to change because really I'm the architect. I'm giving that to you. You're going to go ahead and start doing some things on top of that. <laughs> I was working in 2012 and I got myself in trouble. Okay, so we got that thing hanging around. So what I want you to do now is, given that that architectural model is out there, that file, that Revit file is kind of hanging out there waiting for you, is instead shift your attention over to Revit MEP. And you can open it on these machines. Let me go ahead and find it in my little connect collection of things. If I go to Autodesk, And I think it should be on most of your machines. If it's not, we can go ahead and get it installed on them. You can also go ahead and download this from uh, uh, the Autodesk Student Community site if you want to go ahead and put this on your own machine. But Revit MEP you're going to find looks amazingly like Revit structure and looks amazingly like Revit architecture. Because really, underneath it all, it is the same program. There's really just a different set of tools and uh, kind of features that support MEP design a little more closely. But fundamentally, it's the same tool underneath it all. So let's let this open up. And with any luck, we'll be OK. Now see if you can open up Revit MEP on your machines. It should be on most of your machines. There might be some newer machines that it's not on. But let's see if we can get it up and get it all kind of open with a new document. Go ahead and just open a new blank document if you can. If you don't have 2010 of that, you can always go ahead and do we have any of the Revit MEPs? No, we, have an old. no, we need a newer one than that. What's that? No MEP at all? If you want to install MEP as we're working, and you can just sort of watch along, and it'll actually help us to install it on these. If you can go out to the K drive, I'll show you how to do it. Yes, on some of these machines, it gets rotated around. If you go to the K drive and open that up, Inside there, way towards the top, you'll find something that says, oh, it is. I've got to always find which one it is. Mm. There's architecture. Why does that list look like it's not in order? Type, sort it by name for me, if you could. There we go. And Arvid, OK, there's Autodesk Revit MEP 2010. Open that folder on the highest level. And then there's something that says Revit MEP 2010 32-bit. If you double click on that, it should actually start installing it on your machines. Now, some of the newer machines on the front that won't work for because um, they're 64 bit machines. Well, let's see if that'll actually work in terms of trying to initialize some of these things. That's on some of these. How are you, some of you have MEP, MEP in the middle? OK, it's so sort of varying. Um, yes, that one right there. Double click that and then run this shortcut right there. OK, you got it. Beauty. Okay, good. A little variation in terms of what's going on. No worries. If you don't have it and you just need to watch along for right now, let's let it install and we'll kind of catch you up. Yes? Yes. Yes. So, and you can download it from the student community site and all that stuff. Okay, but just go ahead and watch along. I think it's actually relatively simple what we're going to do today. So, you'll sort of get the general principle even if you can't go through and uh, kind of like carry along step by step. But here's the basic idea. Yeah, I'm going to create a new document. And again, I'll save this out in a few steps so that you can, uh, for people who are busily installing right now, you can catch up in a few steps. One of the biggest differences you'll start to see about Revit MEP versus Revit architecture is there's a sort of notion down here in the project browser there being different types of plans. There are plans which are uh, focused on HVAC, so focused on the ventilating and air conditioning systems. There's uh, systems or there are plans which are focused on plumbing. And although we're going to go through and create a single model that has all those different elements together, every view has properties that control what types of elements are visible in that view, just to kind of help you sort things out. So the plumbing views are just set to a discipline or a subdiscipline of plumbing, and it features those elements as opposed to the HVAC ones. Okay. Up here at the top, in a way, this looks like all mechanical equipment. It looks a little bit different. If you go over to the Architect tab, though, you'd, look, uh, you'd be back in familiar territory. If you go to the Architect tab, 
you'll find uh, walls and doors and windows and some of those things. The modify tab, most of those things, the annotate tab look very much the same. It's just that it's very much focused now on HVAC and plumbing and electrical components. So that's MEP. Okay, let's start by just talking about the plumbing system and what we want to do in there. So for the plumbing system, really, there's a couple of different things we want to do. We have all those fixtures. We'd like to actually run some plumbing lines to connect them all together, both in terms of supplying the fixtures with water and actually draining the water away okay, on the sanitary side. So let's start with actually just bringing in our architectural model, okay, but do it in a special way. Not bring it in, but link to it so we can sort of see it, but we can't touch it because we want to allow the architect maybe continuing to touch it over there and we want to sort of be able to work relative to what the architect's doing. So the way that works, and it really is going to work the same whether it's MEP or whether it's structure, is under oh the Insert tab, you find the notion of linking to another Revit file. And this is what we want to do. You want to link to another file. And the file you want to link to is that one that I just saved out there on the L drive. In your homework set, it's actually another one that's part of the zip archive. We've given you an architecture model, and we've also given you like a shell of like a structural model and a shell of a MEP model, those are actually already linked. Okay, so you won't need to do this step in the homework. But just so you know how it works, how that was set up is we link and we say, hey, I got my model here, but let me go ahead and point to another model. And the one I was going to point to was it's under session 15, that architectural model. Now there's one very important choice I almost rushed through, so I'm going to encourage you to be careful when you do this to make sure you don't rush through, and that is this positioning choice. Positioning really is actually one of the most critical things in terms of getting right that can either sort of work to your advantage or really mess you up in that. The idea is as follows. As we go sort of and figure out how our different layers of models work together, you sort of figure, you, you determine really what the relationship's going to be. Center to center, it turns out, is actually a pretty poor relationship to count on. Because what happens is, if your architectural model is this big, okay, but your structural model or any of the other models contains something that's a little bit over here, outside of the bounds, the, the center changed. Okay? And that'll throw your whole alignment between different things off. So center to center is actually probably the worst thing to choose, because it's always going by the center of mass. And that's not a very good relationship. You can't preserve that very well. A great one is origin to origin, because then my 000 becomes your 000 becomes his 000, and they're going to stay <laughs> locked at that point. So that gives us an awful lot of very explicit control. So I like origin to origin the best. Let's bring in the model, and it should look amazingly similar to what we had over in the other view. Okay. The big difference between working in Revit architecture and working here is because it's a linked model, it's even sort of suggesting systems in there. That's actually funny. It's being pretty smart about what it's doing. Um, this is a linked model. So as a linked model, it sort of has the attribute you can look, but you can't touch. Okay, that's the way I always like to think about it. You know, so we can put things relative, we can do all sorts of things, but we can't actually touch the model and get inside. And we actually do want to do some touching. So what we're going to do is find the elements that we want and copy them into our model okay, based on those locations, and then have just linked versions of them so that if the architect moves the toilet, our toilet will move too. Or if I move the toilet, the architect's toilet will move. Yes? Um, what will happen is every time you open this file, it will open the latest version of the linked file. So as soon as the architect gives you the new linked or the, the new Revit architecture model, okay, yeah, and you open, yeah, you would see it. So, uh, for example, now someone uh, modified the valve. Yes. In in the architect model. Yes. So would you see it now? It as I, it would be as soon as I would either reopen it, as soon as I open, yeah, it doesn't. It's not. It's not like a live link. It's sort of a, at a file time, at a file open time link. Okay. So if they do and save, they don't even have to tell you about it. Just when you open it next time, it'll uh, update with a version of it. But it's not real time. It's kind of yeah. It, you sort of reload. In fact, let me kind of show you where that is. Yeah. Just in terms of the links, 
Whenever you go through an open, it always, um, it does a reload at the open time. But in case, like, I changed it and you happen to have it open and we don't want to reload that way, what you can do is under the Manage tab, there's this thing where you can uh, manage your links. And under there, we can see that there's a Revit file. It's loaded right now. And I can say reload it. And that would just force me to do it right now. So semi-real time. Okay, so I got my model in here, that's pretty good. <coughs> what I would like to do is, I could go ahead and just copy in those plumbing pictures, but what I would like to do is actually also copy in the grid lines and maybe the levels, just so I have some point of reference. So as I place my things, like I'm referring to things at the same levels that the architectural model's referring to things in terms of what the height changes are and the level uh, elevations. So let's show you how you do that. If you go to, like, for example, the floor plan view, let me go to the plumbing floor plan, plumbing floor plan view, you'll see I have some grids in there. If I would turn off, let me just view at visibility graphics, show you, if I would turn off the linked file, and there's nothing in my file, it actually is just kind of a big empty space, but if I turn that back on again, you'll see, we can see the linked file. So what I want to do is I'm trying to grab the grids and just make a copy of them locally. I'm going to grab the levels and do the same thing. And then I'm going to grab the plumbing fixtures. You'll get all three of ultimately. So how you do that is there's a tool under Collaborate called Copy Monitor. And what Copy Monitor does is it not only copies, but then it monitors for changes. So if the architect moves the grids, you'll know about it. Or if the architect moves the levels, you'll know about it. Or if you move the copy of the levels, he'll know about it. Because often in, the, in terms of grids, you know, the structural engineer often controls the grids as opposed to the architect. So you may need to move the grids to support your structural requirements, and the architect has to respond. But we'll say copy monitor. We're going to select some file. We're going to select a link, basically. And what I have to do is just choose the linked file. And now we're sort of in a special mode where we can choose the things that we want to copy. So we can choose to copy. And then I'm going to actually just choose the grids. So when I say copy, I can choose this one. It's giving me a little warning because the grid bubbles at the end are a little bit different. I'll copy that one. I'm going to copy that one. And I'm going to copy that one. Just get them all. What is the effect of that? It's done a couple different things. I still have to finish. It's sort of ready to copy, but hasn't quite copied them yet. This will save my changes. Okay. What's just happened now is I actually have local grids now that match the architectural grids. Okay. So the nice thing is, come on over here. I got my local grid. That's all okay. Notice when I select one of these grid lines, this little guy sort of shows up. And that little guy is telling us, kind of looks like, like a heartbeat almost. It's telling us that there's some sort of connection, some relationship between different things. And because of that, we're actually going like, to uh, like see changes pipe through between two different things. So how does that actually work? Let me actually kind of show you. I'll be really daring and go off script, as we usually do. <laughs> so what's going on over here? Um, if, for example, the architect now, back in their model, moves that wall and then saves it away again. Okay. Off script. Now we'll go back over to Revit MEP. I'm back over in Revit MEP. Notice I don't see the change yet because I haven't reloaded. If I would actually say um, uh, manage or reopen, either way would work. And I reloaded that file. Okay, it's going. Oh, something's changed. We need a coordination review. Okay, so uh, what it's trying to tell us is basically something's moved, and you can sort of even see what's moved. You know, the grid lines moved. So we're going to do a coordination review. The coordination review is going to say, hey, for all those things that are linked together. How do you want me to resolve this? Should he push it back over here? Or am I going to go over there? And you get to sort of figure out who gets to uh, like uh, control this one. So coordination review is right here. Coordination review is also under the Collaborate tab. And I'm going to select a link. I'll select the, that my linked file is the one that I want to do my review with. So basically, it's telling me that a grid has moved. 
So the question is really, oh, what are we going to do with the whole thing? Grid moved. I have the choice of either accept the difference. I could, uh, and it's kind of, I think about what this always means. I think accept the difference means that, okay, there is a difference and I accept it. <laughs> it's kind of like, I'm not going to pay any out. It's okay. We're going to agree to disagree. Something like that. Whereas I am pretty sure what I want to do is actually do the modify. And I always have to remember this because I don't do this day to day. Where I'm going to modify and apply. Yes. And that's going to basically say, okay, I'm giving in. I'm going to modify and take what you gave me. Okay, so you get a choice. You can postpone, you could agree to disagree, or you can decide to acquiesce. Okay, now, for the purpose of uh, your assignment, don't worry about that. You're not gonna, we're not going to do that to you. I'm not going to change anything at the last minute. It's just kind of going to stay put. But we copy monitor things, and that's the point of copy monitoring. Other things that we often copy monitor in, just so you know about them, include like levels. Because if I'd really like to have the linked models levels so that as I place elements in my MEP that I'm using your level two and I'm using your level three, not my level two and level three. Okay. What I can do then is again copy monitor. I'll choose that link project. And then what I want to do is copy and I can actually do multiple at the same time. I should show you that. Oops, I have to control click to get the multiple. And I'll say, finish my selection. And then finally, uh, finish doing the copy. OK, and now I'm not just going to have level two and level three as part of my project in addition. So I have those to work with. OK, now all that's just sort of getting the framework across. What I really want to get is those toilet fixtures. <laughs> I want to get them over here because while they're in the linked model, I can't route them. But if they're in my model, I can route them. So let's go after them too. Let me go to a 3D view. Here they are hanging out in the linked model right now. What I'm going to do is again copy monitor and select a link, which I might have to back out to do this. Okay. Let me see if I can get those fixtures. Looks like I may be having a little trouble grabbing them. Let me turn on the wireframe view. Sometimes that helps me. <coughs> mm, looks like I'm still I'm just I'm having sort of a selection issue right now. I have many issues, but selection's one of them. And in within this we're going to say uh, what do I want to do? Let me uh, take a look at the options. Well, let me try this. Let me try to do a batch copy. By let me just do a big drag, see if I can select them that way. Actually, maybe they are selected. I'm just not seeing it. No, nope, I'm just going for walls. Hmm. Cancel out of there for a second. Let me take a look at my options. Grids, columns, floors. This has actually changed a little bit in terms of what's going on in the newer versions. So I apologize for that because what I'm looking at looks a little bit different than what I'm used to. Well, <coughs> hang on just a second. I'm getting caught in a version thing. Can I actually get that? I actually have it there. Hmm. Hold that thought, because uh, you know, we're going to proceed on the basis as though I copied those, and I'm going to figure out what the difference is in terms of, because it may be in the older version, it actually just lets me sort of work with it right out of the linked model. But we'll sort of see how that's going in just a second. If not, we'll do something. And yeah, let me kind of check something out in terms of whether this will work. Okay, so here's the deal. Okay, assuming we had those things copied in there, and um, give me a, uh, a buy on that one right now until we figure out what's going on. What I want to do is actually run a couple different types of piping. And piping really sort of falls into, like we have sort of a way of uh, terminology we use for it, and some basic rules you need to know about it, and then there's sort of different types of systems you need to know about. So let's give you like piping 101, just to kind of get you started. You gotta love this board, because we just kind of keep on writing on top of it as though somehow it makes all that other stuff disappear. Okay, that'll work. Okay, in terms of as we go working with piping and stuff like that, if I run a pipe perfectly vertically, okay, I call that a riser. Okay, 
And if I go through and <coughs> I have a pipe that kind of extends off the side of the riser, doing something like this, okay, we usually call that a main line. Okay, and then what will happen is off of that, there may be some lines that sort of extend and go off in smaller directions. And generally, it's getting bigger, smaller, smaller as we go on out. And that's what you call a branch. Then just some random terminology you need to know about. In terms of risers, they tend to run perfectly vertical. In terms of these mains and the branches, here's the deal. When it comes to feeding water to a fixture, you can run pipe perfectly horizontally. That's A-OK, -okay, because just the pressure will take care of what it needs to do. When you're draining water, however, you don't want things to run perfectly horizontally. You need to basically have like water go flows downhill. So you always need to have sloped lines when you're doing these kind of mains and branches off. Of any sort of drain line needs to be sloped slightly. Okay. So in terms of different types of lines, you'll have s these types of lines. You'll have, you'll have the hot water supply. You'll also have cold water supply. You'll have something called a sanitary line, is the way they call it, but it's really fundamentally the drain line, which will take the waste away and any waste water and waste with it. Okay, And then you'll also have vent lines, which are typically pipes which are just carrying air, which are ultimately connected into the sanitary system. They basically provide air to prevent vacuums preventing the drainage from happening. So there's just, you know, these four different types of systems. For what you're going to be worrying about, we won't worry about vents. That gets a little more complicated. We're just going to worry about supplying and taking the water away. So hot water, cold water, and sanitary. So let's go ahead and mess around with that just a little bit and see if we can make that happen. So here's the deal. I got my different plumbing fixtures over here. What I want to do is first go through and put in some sort of riser, just a vertical line that's going to basically uh, kind of carry, I'll start with the drainage system, just carry all the waste down to the lower floor, something like that. So to go through and do that, oh, I can do it a couple different ways. The easiest way for me tends to actually be to go through and do it in an elevation view, because I want to just basically draw a vertical pipe. So if I come and say that I want to choose a pipe, we always have the choice of what diameter the pipe is. I'm going to choose about a four inch pipe, which is pretty typical for what I want to, uh, for like a drain line of this type. I'm going to choose some sort of slope, and I'll just leave it at zero for right now. I'm going to go ahead and draw this pipe vertically straight up. Now, that pipe may not be in a very good location in terms of the Y space. Let me kind of see where it is. It's really way out here. Actually, let me try. Let me see if I can get a little smarter about that. Let me say that I'm going to uh, set my work plane. If I set my work plane to, oh, is it grid two back there? I think that's what it was. Let's see if that'll actually draw it on that wall as opposed to just sort of drawing it out in space. I want to give you a better technique. Let's see if that's any better. Nope. Oh, well. <laughs> that's not working for me. Let me just go ahead and move it into place then. Go back to 3D. Grab it. What I want to do is actually sort of move it a little hard. Let's see if I can go to the floor plan view and see any better what's going on. OK, there it is. I'll just kind of move it back in here. Now, in terms of what's going on, there's a, that's a fairly coarse representation. It's almost a symbolic representation of what's going on with the riser. So what I need to do is, if I want to see that in a little more detail, is actually switch from being a coarse view to a fine view. And then it'll actually scale it to size. That's closer to what it wants to be at 4 inches. Now, this pipe itself has all sorts of properties. And we can take a look at that. We can see which system it thinks it belongs to. Nothing just yet. Okay, we'll tie it into a system in just a minute. But it's just going to be hanging out here. So let's go ahead and see if you can get uh, like one pipe kind of there. Okay, let me, uh, for folks who are following along and want to catch up, let me do this. Let me save this as. 
And I'm going to say that this is session 15. And this is going to be, what did we do? The, we had our grids copied and riser placed. So if you want to jump in at this point, go ahead and pick up that file off the L drive. And you can kind of pick that up. Okay, so the first step is just going ahead and put the riser in place. The next step is going to be, in addition to having the riser, we want to have some of these main lines, which are actually going to go popping around in the different horizontal directions. And to draw the main lines, it's going to be it's a little bit different. Not sure what that is. Let's see what's going on. Let me see if I can save that away. Why are you complaining to me? It looks like it is. Hang on, I'm going to try this again. OK. Well, it seems like it's saving <coughs> it. We'll try again. OK. So we got our riser placed. That part's looking pretty good. Now we're ready to go through and try to run just a horizontal line, so kind of our main line. And to do that, again, we're going to go to piping and sort of choose the size, sort of talk about it a little bit and just sort of indicate where its location is going to be. So for this one, let me zoom on out just a hair. I'll again choose piping. And I'm going to say, oh, it's still 4-inch piping. That feels pretty good. In terms of the slope, let me go ahead and, oh, give it a little bit of slope. Oh, and who knows what the rule is for draining right now. Is, is it a quarter in 12 or is it something like that? Yep, let's try that. And then what we can do is actually just uh, draw a line on out. And let's see what that looks like. Oop. Yeah, I actually ended up placing it a little bit high. What I should have done is let me undo that and just do that again so we can sort of pay attention uh, as opposed to doing it quickly. As I'm drawing the pipe, it has all these different properties, including the slope and all that type of stuff. Inclu one of them is the offset. Okay, So if I want this to be, again, relative to level 1, because that's where I am, if I want that to be at 0 or minus 1, because I want it to be below the floor or wherever I want it to be, in fact, I'll put it at minus 1 just so I can sort of see it down there. And I'll say draw it on out. Let's see what's going on there. Hang on, it could be something. No, yeah, that should be okay. Let's try again. Yes? Ah. That should be, let's see. Let's see if we even show the working point. Okay, let's try it again. Good suggestion. No, it's not doing it there for me. Let me think about what its issue is. I'm going to put it at one foot up. I'm just going to try some different things in there. It's weird that it let me put it at 27 feet up, or 23 feet up, but it's not letting me do it here. Between the segments is too great. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to try it the other way. Again, every version's a little bit different in terms of doing this. Let me do it that way, making it two segments. It's definitely fussy. It's, it's one of those tools that got a lot, has gotten a lot better as it goes on. Let me undo a couple things just to kind of like see if we can sort of uh, get you back in there. But basically, the idea is you draw piping, and as you draw piping, and it, that's just the dead on, it didn't seem to like. No, it likes it that time. OK. What it's doing is, let's see if we can kind of pop around and see. As it's putting the pipe in place, okay, it's not only putting the pipe in place, it's actually being pretty smart about these different little joints and connections. And let's see if we can actually show them to you. Let me shade that so you can sort of see it a little bit better. It's actually being pretty smart about connecting things together. Let me uh, shade that with the edges so you can see all that. 
So even in here, right now that's got a little elbow connection in there. If I go ahead and pull this on down, okay, it hasn't healed itself just yet. Let me pull that off, and if I come back in here and try to pull it back in again, <coughs> when it rejoins, I'm not sure if you can see there, it actually put a T in there instead. Zoom out. So it's actually pretty smart. If you can, it's fussy, but when you get it to sort of work just right, it does a very good job of figuring out, given sort of the pipe sizes that you're running and what sort of connection is going to be necessary, what needs to happen to kind of make it all join together. Because it has a whole library of different sizes and reducers and parts and types, and it sort of figures out what it has to do to kind of make it join together. So for this pipe that's in here, let's go back and take a look at it. The diameter's that. I think it does have the slope that I want it to. Let me actually, I'm going to try lowering it down now to oh, like zero. I'll just put it at the ground level. Okay. So what I really want, I want that to be below so the toilets can drain down to it. Okay. So I got a riser and I got this main line in here. Okay. My next task is really to go ahead and get these toilets and get them connected into there. And let's see if we can get this to work. This is the part that I have the, just a little bit of anxiety in terms of wondering what's going to happen right now. So if I choose that, and now it's, it's not doing that. OK, I've got to get it copied in. I've got to figure out why it won't let me copy. Let me try uh, doing the copy monitor again. Because really what I'm trying to do, what I need to do next is really as simple as saying, basically, take that toilet and connect it to that line. And the problem is, since it's over in the link model, it's not letting me do it. So let me see if I can get that link to work or that copy to work, and we'll see if we can make because you know the, the plumbing part of this is easy. We're we're fighting the copy monitoring. Let's see if we can make that happen. Copy monitor again. Select the link at that file there. I want to copy. But it just really won't let me get those toilets. which is incredibly disturbing to me in terms of not being able to do that. Because really, hmm, that's something that actually changed between 2010 and 2011 in terms of what's going on. Um, I think about what we want to do to that relative to the assignment, because we could go ahead and have you do your MEP model in a newer version. I'm just trying to think about what the right thing to do. Structure you're OK on. This is kind of dumb in terms of not being able to put this in here, right? You know, it's a, uh, hmm. So all my examples are from 2011. We'll go ahead and, and we'll just finish that. <coughs> Let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and you won't be able to follow along right now and I'll figure out what we're going to do relative to the assignment. But let me go ahead, I'm going to pull this into uh, 2012, the newer version, okay, and show you how to actually do the linking. You know, we'll figure out the logistics of how to get you able to do this for the assignment. But the important thing is I want you to see how to do this. Because this is really, the fact that you don't have 2012 on these machines is really just, it's our dumbness about having our licenses not up to date yet. Although that is actually actively being worked on right now. So uh, we should have an answer for that pretty quick. So let me do this. I'm going to save this away. And I'm going to switch over to 2012 just so that I can like complete that piece. Because it really is worthwhile seeing. And we'll figure out what's going to go on there. Okay, so let me go ahead and close up 2010. In terms of 2012, let me open that. It's going to look amazingly similar in terms of what's going on, but it seems to have copying of the plumbing fixtures enabled. <laughs> so I got to do a little back research to figure out if you can't copy them in there, what were you supposed to do? Okay, let's go ahead and open, and I'll go out to the L drive and open that very same file that we were just working on. Okay, and it's the grids and the risers placed. Let's 
do that. So what I'd say, just relative to the assignment, just for everyone who's going through, you know, for now, just you know, focus on the structural, get that part done in terms of what's going on. I'll figure out the answer, what we're going to do on the uh, the plumbing side, and get the an answer to that like tomorrow. So we'll know for definitively what way to do you know, to handle that. We may just give you an MEP model that already has the plumbing fixtures placed into it, so you can just route them or something like that. You know, we have lots of tricks up our sleeve to try and get you through that. Because the important part is, you know, it's not that you can place a plumbing fixture; it's more that you can get the routing down. That's what we're after. Okay, so we're almost there. <coughs> That's okay. So here's what we're basically going to do. Okay, so here I am. This is, should look very similar in terms of what's going on over there. I got my basic uh, little plumbing fixtures there hanging out. I'm going to say collaborate again and try to copy monitor those uh, little guys in there. So I'll select the link, and I will copy. And lo and behold, if I can even probably drag and get them all, pop that. That one's copying in. Let's get that one in. And finally, I'll get that one in. I think I already got that one. There we go. It's already linked. OK, beautiful. So let's finish that. So with those elements copied in now, let me just switch or rotate around and kind of show you the final step over here. Let me zoom to fit. Hmm, looks like I didn't place my riser in this yet. So let's go ahead and, uh, or I didn't save it after I did that. Let me go ahead and just put it in here too. So once again, I'm going to put, or I have the riser there, but let me go ahead and put the, uh, just the horizontal main in there. So I'll say pipe. I'm going to say that it's down at, oh, is it still too high? Ah, very good. Let me see if I can fix that. Am I going to let me do it there? Let me try to switch to an elevation view. <coughs> Thank you. Hence the, uh, it would be too sharp an angle thing. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Let's go to the uh, floor plan of the plumbing. I'll say, great, I'm going to put the pipe in. It's going to be a four-inch pipe, kind of like I did before. Um, put the offset in. In this case, that's fine. We can decide whether it's sloped. I'm going to say slope it down or up, or I always have to remember which way is which. Let's say slope it up from this angle. We're going to choose one quarter inch. So they sort of change the interface around a little bit. <coughs> Okay, let's see what's happening. It could be that they're above or below our head. Actually, no, they're just a little bit below us in terms of what's going on. That's a, that's a visibility, uh, or that's a view range thing. Let's turn that on and shade that with, uh, okay. So the final step I wanted to show in terms of this sort of plumbing thing is really, I got those fixtures, I got this pipe, I want to get them together. Okay, so what I got to do is as follows, zoom out. Um, let me even turn off the linked file so we can just see the ones that are actually in here. There we go. That's my fixture. I want to get that one connected to the pipe. You do this. You say connect into, say which of the different connectors, and we're going to use the sanitary connector. And I'll choose that pipe. Next up, we'll do the same sort of thing here. We'll say connect over here, connect into, sanitary out, and connect it into that pipe. So this part's not too bad. So I choose the urinal, 
connect into sanitary out. It's only a two inch line. Watch what happens here. Not only does it sort of uh, go through and connect it, it actually puts a little reducer in there, or actually an expander here, something like that. It's very smart about routing pipe. And the final thing will be over here. We'll get this guy, and I'll connect him into, and I'm also going to connect the sanitary system in here. Beautiful. Okay. Now, as I've been putting these different things together, you will notice that there's this funny thing over here called the system browser. And there are many different elements that are unassigned right now. These are different sort of connections on fixtures that don't have any connection to them yet. So for the lavatory, there's some sort of cold water connection that's not connected. On the water closets, there's some cold water connections that aren't connected. Similarly, in terms of domestic hot water, the lavatory has some unconnected hot water thing here, so we have to do some piping to that. On the other hand, down over here in piping systems, and they're all hydraulic. That's funny. I should have changed that type first. Yeah, I really want this to be the sanitary system, and I should have done that. Nah, I should have done that right up front because it's it's not. Yes, they're they're in the wrong system right now. Uh, see if I can change it anywhere in here, or if I've gotten too far. Let's change that. It's actually the sanitary system. OK. Oh, that was pretty easy. I just had to change one pipe on the system. And it seemed to figure out from that that the whole site piping system had to change over to the sanitary system, which is what I want. OK. So all of these are part of the sanitary system in terms of connecting it away. So in terms of what you got to do, if you can get the sanitary system done like this, okay, you can kind of imagine what it's going to be like hooking up the hot water system with the cold water system. It's really very similar. Yes? I have a question. Yes? You have got like a fixture between one of the summer fixtures and the main one. Like for example, you like to add a valve or a siphon or something. Oh, sure. No, it's really, okay, if you want to do something like that, it's really we go through and just put in some sort of piping accessory. And I think what generally has to happen is we have to put a split in there and then put it in there. So I'm not the best. OK. Oh, no piping accessories are loaded now. Let's see what we even have in there. Air separators, strainers, venturi flow meter, okay, any of those type things. And again, I don't usually play around with this very much, but I'm pretty sure what you're going to do is basically like sever a pipe and then like uh, just kind of insert it in between. Okay, any of these different things, even though it has placed them for you all automatically, for example, that's like a little uh, elbow connection in there. You can go through and choose it and start seeing the properties of it. And if you want to start changing it, just mess around with the type properties to kind of really make it be exactly what you want. So it's pretty good about this. So let's actually talk about what it's good about and what, it's, what it has a harder time doing. Okay, in general, it does a really good job of figuring out what kind of connections I need to get to for to get from pipe A or outlet A to fit to pipe B. It's really good at figuring out that type of stuff, given that it has its library. Okay, what it's sort of good about doing is figuring out the route of the pipes. Okay, but watch out for that because there's this auto auto route option, which sounds fantastic. I'm just going to choose all the fixtures on the floor and say auto route, and it'll magically come up with a fantastic setting and put them all on the wall and hide everything, and it'll all work right. And it just doesn't do a very good job of doing that. So what I like to do is sort of a little bit of what I'll call a hybrid model, where if you can use your intelligence to say, hey, as a designer, I sort of had this utility closet planned where the riser is going to be, and I'm kind of picturing where the main lines are going to run. If you can kind of get the main lines close by, It'll do a really great job about making the last mile. It'll get that stuff done for you. But it really seems to help it an awful lot if you sort of tell it where you want the main lines to be. Okay, Then it doesn't have to guess. Because just in its funny mathematical algorithm, it'll guess some really weird stuff as it tries to figure out what appropriate places are. Okay, So given that you've sort of done this, and you can get sort of the sanitary systems down there, Let's just kind of real quickly get you through oh, how you would start with the next one, which would be to, like, uh, for example, <laughs> put in the cold water or something like that. And it can really be as simple as something like this. I got that riser there. It's kind of hanging around. You can copy it. Okay. So 
the new line is going to be something a little bit different. It's going to be a maybe a two inch pipe or an inch and a half pipe, something like that. And it's not going to be part of sanitary. It's going to go to, you assign it to a different system like domestic cold water. Okay? So far so good? Okay. Now, if you really want to get sort of wild and crazy, you can just go ahead and say, take that. Oops, let me get it. Fixture. Uh, I'm, create, I'm looking for the connected into. Connect into. I can say take the cold water out of that and connect it to that pipe. And actually figure something out. Okay, same thing over here. Get that one. Get that one. Get this one. Let's see if I can connect those in two. Oh, it doesn't want to do them all at once. Okay, that's no auto route can be found. It might be better for me to do something like this, where I take that pipe, pull it on out, okay, and then try this. Connect that into. No, no, I'll wrap. I'd, let me look at this in terms of what's happening in 3D. It's a little high. Well, not too off. That should actually sort of work. Let me just kind of put that down at like zero foot four. Make sure it's shoving it down a little bit. Let me try this again. I should be able, for example, connect that one into. Okay, it actually did something there. It's not exactly what I think of as the nicest connection, but it did something in there. Once it goes ahead and puts a connection in there, you can still go ahead and grab those things. And if you don't like that location of the pipe, start pushing and pulling it around a little bit. Because as you push and pull it around um, within limits, it'll do pretty good about re-attaching uh, all the uh, different you know, bends and elbows and stuff like that. So your task, really, for the assignment is go ahead, we'll give you a model that has where the basic plumbing fixtures are going to be. You know, if not, we'll be actually copied into that model. But it's really just to go through and route you know, domestic hot water, domestic cold water, and the sanitary fixtures for really, there's like two restrooms on the second floor, men's and women's. Just route them and get them together. Because what we want you to do in preparation for the next thing is actually just have a basic mechanical model so that we can then bring it together with your structural model and your HVAC model and just sort of see where everything clashes. That's where we're going with all that. So, you know. Very light on just how much routing you have to do, because really the point is really you got to figure out sort of how everything is relative to each other and what's actually conflicting. That make sense? Yes. Yes, you can color code these pipes, and let's kind of show you. It actually it did it in the floor plan. Okay, and how it's actually doing it with with a series of filters. So let me see if I can sort of apply that in this view. Actually, in the, three, uh, in the default 3D view, it's not turned on. It's just kind of showing up in black and white. In the uh, 3D plumbing view, it is turned on. So you get this whole thing about green, red, and blue, kind of color coding the different types of systems. And where that is, just so you know kind of how that's happening, is there's this thing called filters, where depending upon what the system is that we're using, it's applying just different colors right there. So, yeah, actually very, very good for everyone who's in like PBL or uh, global AEC and going to be heading there. You're going to really start to use this as part of that project and that when you really want to have your supply air ducts in red and your return air ducts in blue or your plumbing system showing up in different colorations, you know, this is how you do that. So you can get these nice 3D schematics and have uh, the color coding indication, the function of all the systems. So in a big integrated view, you can get a sense of what all the different pipes are doing based on the coloring scheme. Make sense? Beauty. Okay, let us go ahead and take a break there now, and uh, uh, you know, come back in five minutes. And when we do, Luis is going to show the other side of the equation, which is how to use this very same tool. But rather than going through and doing it for piping, he's going to show you how you do it to run duct ductwork around <laughs> for, uh, between an air handler and air terminals.